How's it going guys? It's Josh KI6NAZ. This is a long overdue video. We're going to be talking about the Slinktenna by Quirky QRP. So this antenna, the Slinktenna, is created by James Hannibal, owner-operator of Quirky QRP, an Etsy store. James sent me this to review many months ago, and I've actually had this up in the backyard for about three months for most of the summer. And I figured I'd do both a review on its performance and we'll cover how it's held up over those months. So the design of this antenna is pretty ingenious, uh, the way James went about describing how this works. This is a 9 to 1 un un 80 meters through 6 meters helical dipole. It's a 100 watt max output, requires an antenna tuner because it's a 9 to 1 un un in here to get your match, and the extensions are 6 feet on each side. And again, this is a slinky dipole, right? When you open it up, everybody knows it's a slinky. And the minimum recommended height for this off the ground is 5 to 8 feet. And that will change a bit of how it performs, getting it up a little bit higher. I had mine at about 12 feet uh, during its use over the last three or four months. Um, I'm just going to mention it just as we walk around the antenna so you guys get an idea of how this works, but it has two end caps that are PVC and a center PVC piece with eye bolts on the top and each side cap, and that allows you to extend the dipole out and hang it against something. And then there's a BNC connection on the bottom. This is, for a lot of people that I know have been using it or have tried it, they have been using this with like QRP radios. It says 100 watts, which it's totally fine with, but um, generally I use this with my QRP radios. Most of my contacts were actually made with the Shegu or Shegu G90, the one that I'm giving away uh, in an upcoming video for my 73,000 subscriber milestone. That's a 20 watt output radio, and I was able to work digital and single sideband with this antenna. Now, given the nature that it is a slinky, I don't have a hard and fast numbers for a lot of things on this because the slinky is literally coils of wire. It makes your pattern and stuff like that kind of funky to go along with this. And that also goes with the deployment of this antenna. You can hang this off of something and you can do a horizontal dipole type look or an inverted V, but you know they're gonna have their own interesting radiation patterns that are um, pretty hard to quantify in a video. To make setup easier, James has a basically a shock cord system with carabiners on each end, one in the middle and then two on the ends, and it's all pre-measured for what he feels is the optimal setup for the Slingtenna. And then halfway on each side, there's ingenious little clips that will clip to the middle part of the, of the Slinky so it doesn't bow like this when you get it stretched out, it keeps it relatively taut and horizontal. That is a really nice thing to have. So if you're going to pick one of these up, I recommend getting that horizontal stabilizer cord as well. James also ships it with some extra shock cords so that you can actually hang that all the way across um, with leaving the carabiners down and then connecting it up, which is a great way to do it. It pre-measures everything, so you get the perfect little loft, if you will, in the slinky, and it uh, makes it really, really easy to set up. Well, most of my time with this antenna has had it in the backyard hanging up for months. I did set this up in hotel rooms. I've set this up in parks. And for that installation, those setups, I just took that hanging cord that I mentioned just a second ago and hooked that onto whatever I was mounting to and then connected the antenna to that. That allowed me to get pretty nice configurations. I was able to, with the links, a little bit over six feet on each leg, I was able to mount on something in the middle of the room or, or hang it off of furniture and then drag the other thing across to like a, you know, a, the curtain, the blackout curtain. I'd connect it on that. You know, you can make it work pretty well and the carabiners are big enough that you can kind of connect it to anything. So just another recommendation on that, that cordage setup. It makes the whole thing a lot easier to use. Now, there are downsides, and I've kind of already hinted at them with a slinky. They are a coil of wire, right? You don't just have a, a horizontal, thin, you know, or thick, in this case, a little bit thicker than a slinky, as it were. I think the, the slinky's not thin, I would say, but not exactly thick. Anyway, the chaotic nature of a slinky means that 
you're going to have different results as far as it is as an antenna. This is a quirky QRP project, and this antenna is definitely quirky. And as far as its capabilities, I have found that it is a fantastic receiving antenna. Good tell, Bill. Have a good one. Uh, 73's uh, Whiskey 5 Lima QRZ. Kilo Delta 8 Zulu Quebec Golf. Good Lord, what a signal. Kilo Delta 8, Zulu, Quebec, Golf. Beautiful audio. Uh, you're 59 plus plus in Louisiana, and the name is Bobby, QSL. Hey, nice to meet you, Bobby. This is, the name here is Greg, Golf Army Echo Golf. I'm in Michigan, and uh, wow. I, last time I was listening uh, a little bit ago, you had your beam pointed to the uh, west, and I'm, uh, well, if, that, if it's still pointed that way, you're, I'm off the back. Uh, you're hearing me off the back here. You, you're you're uh, five nine plus plus also good good strong signal even even off the back of your beep if that's the way it's still pointed. But uh, and again, name's Greg. I'm in Michigan, uh, southeastern. Uh, that was crazy. About five miles south of Ann Arbor. That uh, and, uh, is barely nice an S two. Sounds, sounds amazing. That alone is worth it. You can, again, it's a 9 to 1 un -un, so basically you have um, two wire antenna with an un, un in the middle. And for receiving, like on an SDR or an SWR, or shortwave listening rece uh, receiver, it works great. Now, as good as the receiving is, I had a harder time with the transmit. I've been able to basically make about five contacts, two of which were single sideband and three were FT8. It works fine. It's a nine to one on on, so you're gonna need about a 10 to one tuner generally to tune the antenna and that works fine. Now. In my cases, I am not in a perfect situation. I do have a lot of RFI in the area, so I am not the best kind of place locally when I'm in the suburbs for testing out an antenna like this, specifically for a QRP radio. And although the G90 isn't a QRP radio, I was, I was running it at 10 watts most of the time since in digital, you don't want to run that thing too hot. And anyway, you get the idea. So basically, I was operating QRP. I think that if you were interested in something like this, it's going to be more of like an outdoor temporary deployment antenna. Although, like I said, this has been um, up in the backyard for over three months. It's made it out okay. PVC is not generally designed to, to live getting beach or sun blasted. And it shows some signs of sun damage. And you can see on the caps where it was facing the sun day in and day out that they're rough now. Um, little things like dirt accumulation. I think there's some dead spiders in there too. This is more of like a portable operation antenna. Put it up in a park. Put it up somewhere where you have like less RFI. And it's going to work for you. Now, I, like I said, I can't really comment too much on the transmit capability because the, the few times I used it were in a heavy noise suburbs environment. And it seemed like it worked a little bit less effective than my speaker wire dipole. But that, again, kind of makes sense. That's a 20 meter cut dipole for that band and this is a multi-band slinky antenna which is again a little quirky a little different so you're going to get some different performances there the dipole is going to work better on 20 it works on nothing else it, it works a little bit on 40 um, and this is going to work on 80 through 6 so a bit of a compromise to get the bands in it but i think you expect that so all in all it is a fun antenna i think it's cool it packs up really light it's small you can easily put this in a go bag or something like that and given that it is 80 through 6 you'll be able to use it with all kinds of different radios it is a fantastic receiver again and it's not going to be as effective as a cut dipole like that speaker wire dipole but it is still capable and i was able to make contacts with it so yeah in the long run it's going to be your call on what you think i think for the price which is around $50. Uh, it's not a bad deal at all to get something that is both cool, quirky, and um, functional. So if you have a quirky Q, uh, quirky QRP slink tenna, tell me in the comments how you have liked it and what you have been able to do with it. Uh, 
post your experiences and let me know what you think. And if you haven't got one, uh, what do you think about it? Let me know. All right. I am Josh KI6NAZ. If you have not already, please subscribe. I live stream every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we are creating an inclusive environment for amateur radio. And hopefully we can keep growing and learning more things together. So please join us. I'd love that. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Hey, there's a spider in there.